from the twisted realm of science and the darkest pits of reason comes chilling tales of godlessness. Bear witness to the unfathomable terror that is... The Good Atheist. Alright, one of the things that I had on my mind recently, and we talked about this on the on the last radio show, but I wanted to keep mentioning it again. This was concerning Jenny McCarthy and the whole um, MMR vaccine, uh, you know, trouble that's been brewing. Because, you know, I, I think that a lot of us kind of take medicine for granted these days. Don't you get that feeling? I mean, that everybody just thinks, oh, well, you know, medical science is going to take care of everything. I don't need to worry about anything. And meanwhile, people don't get vaccines. They don't take amb- antibiotics properly. I mean, it's a fucking mess. Yeah, they basically figure that if you catch something, then, you know, medical science can fix it then. Yeah, well, you think, oh, I have a staph infection? Well, I'll just give me some antibiotics. I'll be on my way. And it's like, sorry, dude, they're not working. And then you're like, well, what does that mean, doctor? Well, that means that this thing is eating you, and we can't do anything about it. And we basically have to cut off your leg or legs. Well, it's like even the staph infections. I mean, it's just like, what are you supposed to... You know, like, you, you would have to cut so much of it, you're probably just, like, dead anyways. So, the thing that's been bugging me is, I, I read that uh, Roald Dahl article that he wrote. He uh, did, did you read that uh, essay? He, he wrote it in 1986. It was concerning, he was begging people, essentially, to get the MMR vaccine. This was in 1986 he was doing this? Yeah, he, he wrote that in 1986. Yeah, for those that don't know Roald Dahl, author of such amazing books as Matilda and uh, James and the Giant Peach and, God, What's Witches big friendly and a bunch giants, of others. I think, is this big one. Big Friendly Giant, that's him, right? BFG? Uh, Pretty sure. Pretty sure. I know that that's the first thing I said when I when I said the word. I'm just, Roald Dahl is a person who said BFG. No, I'm just I'm just going to mutter uh, un, un, like, unknowingly. Doubt, doubtfully. Okay. No, that's fair. And just leave it at that. We I'm take not gonna... no stance on whether or not he did or didn't. This hasn't been confirmed. But I'm just but, saying he could have. Uh, In any case, you know, uh, we, we already mentioned several of his works, which we can't verify. Yep. Anyways, he wrote an he wrote an essay because in nineteen I think it's sixty nine his daughter died uh, of measles, and back then like you know we, we don't really understand this but in the just some forty or fifty years ago measles was killing one point four million people every year, okay vaccination in the do you know how many measles outbreaks are contained due to the vaccination campaign that's largely been successful the past twenty years fifty two million cases. Have been sort of like, you know, avoided. That that's that's the estimate number of people that were infected every year. It's a highly infectious and it's a deadly disease. There were plenty of people that died. Like it used to be like, you know, the the common forms. Are they they'd say, well, the only thing that's uh, constant is death taxes and the measles and, and death from the measles. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it was pretty bad and. The, it, it's kind of on a comeback. That's the whole thing. Like, basically, the measles was, was eradicated for, to a large extent uh, in, in the United States and in Great Britain. And the only instance that I had read about was from something from, like, uh, 2005 where there had been a number of cases because somebody had cont- contracted it when they were in Romania and it spread to a bunch of people who had been improperly immu- uh, like vaccinated or immunized. So it managed to spread itself, and that's the, that's the kind of thing that I wanted to, to segue into. And this is, this is the thing that worries me, because in 2005 in the U.K., there were only 76 cases of measles. In 2006, there were over 100. And in Wales alone this year, so far, there have been 277 fucking cases. So not even across the entire U.K., just Wales? Just Wales. Because the, the way that it works, the, the, the crazy thing about measles, if you get the uh, vaccination just once, it gives you about 90% protection. Now, that sounds pretty good. You know, like, I like the idea of 90%. I'm like, if I gave, told you you had a 90% chance to win a million dollars, you'd be like, fucking A, I've got it. You know, it's done. It's, 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 I got this. But if I told you you had a 10% chance to die, how would you feel about that? You, you wouldn't like those odds anymore, would you? No, but it's not a 10% chance of dying. It's just a 10%, it's a 10% chance, chance, chance of, of getting measles, of which, getting which measles. then gives you, well, like, what, 0.01% chance of dying from the measles? Um, well, you know, there are two deciding factors. Number one is your age. Uh, that's, like, the, 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 the biggest common uh, sort of, like, correlation. If you're young or you're old, 
that's when you're more likely to die from it. But you can also have all kinds of like uh, disorders. Like uh, women who get the measles and are pregnant are more likely to have like fetal complications and stuff like that. There's been issues where uh, children have been born with uh, all kinds of mental disorders caused specifically because the mother was infected with the with the measles. During pregnancy, so it's a pretty scary thing, you know. Mm. Uh, there aren't a lot of diseases that you're going to get uh, that are highly contagious that will fuck up your baby when you're pregnant, and measles is a pretty big one. So the first shot gets you to ninety percent. Second shot pretty yeah. much will take care of the rest of. Yeah, pretty much. It's like the the, the chances of contracting you're so low that this is exactly the reason why I was mostly beat. You know, I, nobody was talking about the measles anymore. And then in 1996, there's an article in the Lancet. Uh, that's written by a dude by the name of Andrew Wakefield. And it made a huge... That's where all the controversy comes from, essentially. Like they, the, the guy said that there was a, a link between uh, the MMR vaccine and autism. But, you know, I was kind of curious about that whole link. And I would say, well, whatever happened to that guy? You know, like, what, what did they find out? What do, what do we know about this? Well, it turns out that... Here's how fucked up the situation was. The guy who wrote the study apparently had 12 kids that he had picked anonymously uh, and they had, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, who had apparently had symptoms right after getting the, the shot. Well, of those, when, when they got back and got retested, not one of those kids had actually developed any of the symptoms they had talked about. Many of the symptoms were exaggerated. Some of them were already previous conditions before the vaccine. And uh, to make matters even crazier, it turns out that the guy was financed by a special fund that had been set up by a bunch of lawyers who were planning on using the findings of that study to sue the manufacturers of the vaccines. That's why he wrote it. That's where he got his money from. How fucking insane is that? And now we're dealing with the consequence of this because idiots like Jenny McCarthy and fucking Oprah are telling people there may be a link here. You got to be careful. And all of a sudden, what happens? People don't, they'll either not take the shot or they'll only take one because then they figure they hedge their bets, right? Mm. Which is a terrible, terrible idea. And like, you need to get both because some people don't actually get any immunity from it. You know, like, it's, it's not like it works partially. It's not like the second one is a booster shot. The second one is in case the first one didn't work at all because if it didn't work at all, you're screwed. You have zero antibodies for it. And, uh, I mean, I can't even believe it. I mean, like, this is not common knowledge. This is just something from five minutes of investigation that I found out, but nobody's talking about this. It seems to me crazy, no? Like, not only were the findings proven wrong, but the person who wrote it had a financial motive to, you know, doctor those. I mean, before the study even came out, 10 of the 12 anonymous kids had already started filing lawsuits, and the only two that didn't, one of them was because he was an American, and the second one had a change of heart midway through and felt that the connection was actually, uh, you know, like not there. Mm. That's like, it, it doesn't get more clear than that, you know, the collusion here. I mean, you could say, oh, uh, let's blame Big Pharma for all these drugs and they, they do all these things. I'm like, it goes both ways. There's plenty of scamming going around and that's the scam that we got. A, uh, you know, a, a paper that made up data, that lied, and that had a financial motive behind it. I mean, it's crazy. And now people's lives are in danger. There's a boy that died like three years ago. He was like the first death in the UK due to measles. A fucking five-year-old boy. And his mother hadn't gotten him the shot. I'm like, are you surprised when you start thinking that all the information you're getting about your, you know, your health is coming from a, a, an ex- Porn, well, not porn star, but a, a model, a nude model. I mean, are you joking me? Like, Jenny McCarthy is nothing but a crude, you know, uh, dummy. Just a really crude dummy. I don't know if you remember her brand of comedy. You ever watch kind of her movies? I basically blocked the entire Jenny McCarthy, all, all that stuff. I seem to remember it was like mid-90s MTV type stuff. It's like, no, that was not my scene. Oh, God, it was totally not my scene, man. I, did you even know anyone that watched MTV? Who the fuck watched MTV Dude, back we, then? we grew up in a place where no one had cable until, like, high school. I think that's probably so. why we're not 
the MTV generation zombies <laughs> who are currently sort of like waiting, waddling through the, the, the corporate world trying to get theirs. You know what I mean? Yep. The people who really fucking bought into that whole, I'm going to get, I'm going to make lots of money and have, you know, really nice shit. But you know what? I don't really give a damn about what MTV does. I just want to take a little bit of a side step and just complain quickly about the fact that Discovery Channel and the Learning Channel and basically the History Channel, all of the educational channels that were were actually good back when they started, they all suck now. All these channels oh, have gone downhill. Balls. I mean, I don't care if MTV is dumb. MTV is obviously It's supposed dumb. to be dumb. You know what? Music videos. They're music videos. Well, have, have you watched most music videos? They're it, awful. you got to understand, MTV barely even plays music videos anymore. It's hilarious. They keep on having to add a new channel because they start playing music videos on the channel, and they're like, okay, we got to fill this with more Pimp My fucking ride. Or, I think, well, I mean, at least in MTV, I can realize why nobody want to watch, wants to watch videos anymore. They're just awful. Like, how many booty-shaking fucking videos can you watch and, and start saying, I'm bored? You just got to put it on mute, and I can watch a lot. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Uh, I'm going to use another example then. How many emo videos can you watch where bands are sort of basically crying at the microphone and, you know, just jumping around? Yeah, not very much. No, no, not very much indeed. I always just thought that was funny. You know, here's what I would do. I would rather, if, if I was a band and I had to do a music video, I would rather just film random scenes that went with my music then put myself in it. And I mean, I understand why people are going to put themselves in it. They're like, here's me. This is the package deal. But I'm like, that's obnoxious. If you don't like the music, then you don't like me. So fuck off. You know, like, watch this video. At least that's my attitude. But I don't know. I'm not big part of the big corporate, you know, machine. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get that yet. We have obviously proven ourselves to be terrible marketers. We are bad, you know? I'm like, I'm starting to get this Twitter thing, but barely. No, you just barely. That's a, barely, it, barely. Yeah, You're barely, starting barely. to understand how people possibly can, but we don't understand how. No. We don't understand anything. It's fortunate that people listen to us, because otherwise we wouldn't know how to convince them Yeah, we don't even do know it. how most people actually heard of the show. Like, we just put it up on iTunes, and then it just spread through word of mouth. You know, thanks, Science, because uh, we didn't do any of that promotion. Not at all. Nope. <laughs> It's way too much work, man. Promotion is terrible. No, no, you know what? It has nothing to do with work. It has to do with whatever whatever we do, whatever hard work we put into it. And trust me, we put a lot. It's all spinning wheels. We are we are we are in neutral. We are not going anywhere. We just rev and rev and rev, and we don't understand how to make anything happen. <laughs> so it's quite humorous. I, think, that, I really. think that's how it is with most people. Anyways, you're like, how do I plug into this gigantic thing? And meanwhile, it's like the the, the people who do. They, they don't want to tell you. Mm -hmm. Of course they're not going to tell you. It's a fucking closely kept secret. Well, you know. It's like a the, secret recipe. You got all those. Uh, here's, here's actually a funny story. You know, uh, you know on Facebook there's that ad with that guy, Hi, I'm Kevin and I made lots of money on the internet. No, I don't know that guy. Uh, anyways, it turns out that uh, the picture, that, uh, obviously this guy is not a real person, despite the fact that he has kevinsmoneyblog.com or whatever else like that. Oh, yeah, fucking someone, <laughs> someone just found uh, his picture, the picture that he used, that, that's used for him on all of, the, all of the banner ads and stuff like that, on the box of a uh, barbecue set. Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah. That is fucking awesome. Yeah, I know. Awesome. Love, I, I, that's, that's just clever. See, I could never even fucking come close to just thinking I could get away with that. Yeah, just being like, I'm going to create this entity named Kevin, and Kevin is going to be an internet uh, millionaire, and he's going to tell people how to make money for $40. It's like, yeah, I'll tell you. This is how you make money like on the internet. Tell people you'll make the money. Ask them for $40. That's how you make money Success. on the internet. To like find your own scam. You know, no, enjoy they, the pamphlet. They're all like, check this scam out and P.S. put Google ads, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. lame. <laughs> well, you know, I, I stopped buying those long ago. I, I, I just told myself, you know, I can figure it out myself, which is obviously not true. But you know what? It's, it, it doesn't really matter. It's, it, we're having a good time. Are we having a good time? An awesome time. You know, I wanted to talk about that um, there, there is this group in Milwaukee that is suing a library um, because they have a, an offensive book in their young adult section. So these people are suing for $125,000. Uh, they're suing the library for mental these, damage. Who are these people and what is this book? 
Tell me more, Jacob. Well, I can tell you the book. Is, the book is basically a story of a young man and his quest to come to terms with his homosexuality. Okay, I can see why people might get a little bit riled up about that. And you know what? It's it's funny that it, obviously it, it does belong in the young adult. I, it's it's apparently part of a series. I've never heard of these kinds of books because I'm not a young adult. I don't read these kinds of things. But there's apparently an entire series of them, and it just deal with people and their conflicts in their own lives. You know. So it's, just, it's not like a series that's it's like the homosexual young adult series. It's no. just one of the books in the series that has to do with a character who happens to be gay. Exactly. It's it's not as though the, this is an entire series focused entirely on on homosexuality. But there are, you know, there's lots of scenes that people could consider graphic, like there's the N word that's used and that kind of stuff. You know how real people talk? Yeah, that's how this book is. Hmm. It, it's how real people talk. So apparently this group, including a pastor and just, I don't think anyone below the age of 50 years old who, uh, who's, who claim that they have been damaged, men, you know, like scarred mentally and that they want compensation. There's like about 33,000 per. That's how much they want for the fact that the book is still in the young adult section. Now, obviously there was some debate. They had complained first about it. And the library said, uh, fuck no, off. fuck off. We're going to not listen to you, bigots. And, uh, yeah, because it's still there. They say that they're completely and utterly shocked. They can't sleep. So they want, the, they want also the right to burn this book at the front steps of the library, to make a public showing of the burning of this book. So... Is book burning still legal, right? I, you can burn... Yeah, you, okay, look. So you they're can, actually, you they're actually can looking do for... it. You can do it, but they want they, they want uh, the, the city to give them the right to burn it in front. Because obviously, if you're going to book, burn books, you actually need a permit for that. Mm -hmm. So they want to have that permit to burn this book. It, it's really hilarious to me that they would want to do this because really book burning kind of got taken, the, the the visual aspects of it really got taken over by the Nazis and you, you can't you can't burn a book really without thinking about fascism like that. So I just love the fact that they that they just made it explicitly obvious that they are fascist nut job. Well, I mean, burning retards. books is a fascist move. I mean, you don't have to be a Nazi to be a fascist. Fa you know, Nazism is a type of fascism. But look. I told you this before. There was a Jewish fascist party in the 1930s. Oh no, I'm not. You know? I'm, I'm not associating. Oh yeah, Nazis yeah, yeah. With I, I know. I know. But I'm this, just this saying. Is, this is. This is. This is fascism. When, like, when, they're fascist. When you think of book burnings, I mean, uh, I always see that scene in, uh, what, what was it, Last Crusade. Oh, yeah, I love they, that scene with it. Yeah, and then he yeah. signs the book and that kind of stuff, and everybody's throwing the fucking books into the fire, and, like, the and, and the main bad chick is crying because they're destroying knowledge, and she's like, I didn't sign on to this. Yep, but it's, uh, I tell you the truth, it sure made it look like fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think book burning's horrible, but man, just, I mean, anything involving such a gigantic pile of fire and people, it just seems like a great time. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of these old um, parties that they used to have in my hometown in Weedon, Quebec. Now, this is French-Canadian, so every Saint-Jean-Baptiste day, they'd have this gigantic fire. And, what, I mean, you, you talk about a large fire, they would bring wood from, like, say there was a barn a couple of doors down that just came down. I mean, they they would make a pile that was something up to 20 or 30 feet high of wood. Like, this was this was the, the size of a fucking Burning Man uh, campfire. And this is just a, you know, a few hundred people. <laughs> and they would just have it, like, right outside the hockey rink. Hello, it's a French-Canadian town. Mm. That's the only thing they had, hockey it's rink. It's Canada. An indoor hockey rink, bitches. Anyway, so outside of it, it was a large parking lot. And in the parking lot is where they'd have is a dirt parking lot though. Anyways, so they'd have this massive fire while a bunch of people just you know got drunk and played music and had amateur fireworks, which were just always the riskiest motherfucking things in the world. You know what I mean? Like that guy who's lighting them up with this the fucking <laughs> blowtorch and he's running around doing that, and you're just like someone's gonna get killed or hurt. You, know, oh, like, how? you just gotta understand the nature of these gigantic. Fires, because I think there there was a university that had them. And when you think about it, it's just a gigantic pile of pickup sticks. And when one one wrong timber breaks because it's been burning and obviously it gets weakened, the entire pile falls on kids and or or you know teenagers. And that's basically what happened to some university. They used to have a big bonfire every year, like thirty five feet high, some some insane number. And everybody was shocked when the whole thing fell over and burned a bunch of people to death. So well, I, you play with fire. What's that thing at the end of that sentence? I forget. Yeah, no. Yeah. Is it that you get burned, perhaps? But anyways, going going back to this whole thing, I, I I'm just saying that 
book burning is no longer something that it's not that, cool. It's not cool, man. Yeah, no, no one thinks that it's acceptable. You just got to give up book burning. Book burning was ruined. No matter how fun and awesome it might be, it's been ruined. <laughs> I don't even understand your whole fun thing. It just but, looks, I mean, I, it amuses me. Yeah. You amuse me, sir, with your strange, sometimes fascist humor. No, it's just you just take away you just take away the the moral implications of what you're doing, and you know you're just burning paper, gig, perfect paperback sized burning things i mean when you think about it a book is the perfect thing to burn <laughs> can you think of well, a better thing Fahrenheit to... 451 said yeah no exactly so I, I can see why everybody's obsessed with burning it because it just seems like they were designed to be burned but no i'm uh it's quite obvious what these people are all about i think every time i hear burning and the word books together i fucking panic and freak out all right like every time i i uh, I hear that i think about the library of alexandria and the fact that it burned down here were a million books of the ancient world and it fucking burnt down what did we lose what the fuck did we lose i mean even in the old stuff that we find from the greeks like you, you remember archimedes He's a guy who's like uh, yelled Eureka, you know, discovered the principle of buoyancy and that, uh, not buoyancy, but uh, water displacement, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyways, they teach you that in high school, so nobody remembers. Uh, but Archimedes basically had invented calculus two thousand years before. Uh, but when the two thousand years before somebody before, else, yeah, before you know Sir Isaac Newton, uh, you know, invented it. Or Lipnitz, depending on, you know, who you're going to believe. But that's a fucking different story. Anyways, my point is, the book itself was commandeered by, you know, uh, Catholic priests. And it was erased, and it was turned into a prayer book. So they ran, they they had to run a special spectrography or whatever thing to reveal all of the, basically, the mathematical proofs and calculations that he had shown, basically, you know, the, the primitive form of calculus that he had invented, was a prayer book. You know, it's foolish of the Christians. They should have burnt that book. Don't reuse paper. Paper recycling, bad. Burning, paper. good. You know what? The, <laughs> when you reuse something, then everybody knows what that thing used to be, and you just look the fool. You just look the fool. You're like, wow, you destroyed knowledge. Here's proof. And you're like... Oh, got caught there, got sloppy. We never thought we'd have to fucking own up to that one. Answer for our shit. Well, I'm like, it turns out that people were like, we're tired of you. I mean, uh, here's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Did you read about uh, those Orthodox Jews uh, in Israel that were pelting police with rocks and dirty diapers because there was an opening of a garage park on a Saturday? And they felt that working on the Sabbath deserved people getting rocks thrown at their heads i'm like can you get the fuck out of her faces like honestly it's a saturday even the mayor had gone to special provisions to make sure that no jew was actually working there and that no money was being exchanged it was just a part like an opening of a parking structure but no a bunch of funny you know uh clothes guys with ridiculous hair pelt you with rocks and dirty baby diapers like that's that'll ruin your weekend you think like, I, I don't know what else I can say to that other than just, can you get out of our face? Yeah, Muslims do not own the, uh, own the copyright on being dicks in the <laughs> Middle East. Most definitely not. Absolutely every, every, not. Absolutely <laughs> not. I mean, I've been watching lots of documentaries on, on how uh, you know, some of the Jews feel about President Obama. And uh, it's actually disturbing what some of them are saying. Like, I heard some Jews yelling, white power? Like, do you even understand what that means? And other people were saying that, oh, you know, Obama's not good to Jews. We own this land, that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, sense of entitlement combined with racism? Disaster. These are, these are disasters. Like, you need to do something about your young population because they think that they know lots of stuff on uh, politics and what have you because they have fancy education but they're really just moronic you know they have absolutely no concept of what they're talking about like they even interview one girl she's like oh i don't like obama's policy he's like oh uh, what do you do it's like i study political science so i know my shit ask the girl who, who was benjamin netanyahu she's like i don't know congratulations you did real good i well, what what marks did you get in political science a zero i hope my god I mean, it, I, I don't know if, if it's the education system that's failing people or there's a lack of critical thinking, but it, it's disturbing me. It, uh, I, I, I'm afraid that intelligent people are no longer intelligent. They, they're just led to believe they are because they have a fucking diploma. I think you, your problem is with the smart idiots. 
Yeah, I suppose so, eh? Or, or, or people that are very good at being able to justify things in their head that make no sense. You know, like justifying hatred. I mean, I'm sure people do it all the time. You know, I think in, in some cases I may have done that myself, you know, and I would be disappointed with myself if that was the case. Like I was thinking about honor killings, and, uh, and that's the last thing I want to talk about on the show because I've been doing a little bit more research on honor killings. And the one thing that I wanted to kind of remove from my mind is the perception that this must be inherently due to Religion. Islam. Yeah, because, I mean, is that true? And there's plenty of Muslims that don't do honor killings. Uh, so why do honor killings occur? And I think, from at least from my pre preliminary research, the one thing that I can tell you is that although religion doesn't justify honor killings, it certainly gives the context for such a thing to be possible because particularly the Muslim religion emphasizes a strong patriarchal um, you know, society. And honor killings, or at least the concept of honor, is usually entirely focused on women. You know, like an honor of a family or of a husband is reliant on the activities of his wives and his daughters. And in a, in a culture where reputation is everything, blood libel, uh, you know, infanticide is, is regarded as, you know, sort of no big deal. You know, it's like with everybody understands it and even the women, even the matriarchs and the families can often chillingly rationalize these types of murder. And like I said, I mean, they're not religiously based, but they're just, they are, the religion does offer kind of like a, a particular mind frame and, and, and guideline that leads a lot of people to justify those old customs. So you're basically saying it's a cultural thing, but uh, Islam is a part, big part of that culture? Well, I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, I, Im imagine for just a second that, I mean, if, if you find, or if you interpret the Quran to mean that you have to, you know, like the Quran itself is a very detailed manual about how to live your life. Do not drink alcohol, you know, like this is how you're supposed to dress, so on and so forth. Uh, so it's a very rigid, you know, structural thing. So if, if you give people the impression that under God there are all of these, you know, like all of these rules are in place, then even those things that may not be specifically mentioned in the Quran that are part of your culture, like honor killings, they don't conflict with the religion itself. In fact, many elements of the religion reinforces the fact that women are less valuable than men and you know therefore encourage this kind of thing so it's like i the blame is not theirs but the responsibility is shared definitely fucking shared and 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 you know that's that's one of the things that i wanted to remove from my you know like is it prejudice for me to think that you know just because you're uh, you know muslim you're going to think that way i'm like obviously they're not because cultural elements change i mean not everybody absorbs the culture in the same way it's like do you you know, do you, do you always drink beer? Do you say, hey, do you watch hockey? Do you fucking do every stereotypical Canadian thing? I do quite a few. Oh, okay, bad example. <laughs> you are a stereotype, but you no longer watch hockey. Hmm? That's true? No, Okay, that's good. true. See, there you go. Um, and you don't drink that much beer. Only because we're broke. Yes, that is true. Do you think we'd drink more if we weren't broke? Absolutely. The beer w would be in our, stocked in our fridge, full. Oh, Absolutely full. Isn't that exciting? We That vision... I look forward to that vision. That day where that can be that can be said. 